Good morning, snipers. I'm back with another education session. Firstly, a brief overview about our community, Sniper Trades. It is a trading education platform dedicated to empowering traders by providing them with the detailed insights, strategies, and tools to enhance their trading skills. The core mission of our community is to democratize the trading field by making high quality actionable information accessible to traders at all levels, be it beginners or you know they are experienced professionals. Through a blend of live trading sessions, comprehensive courses, and one-on-one -on -one mentorship, Sniper Trades aims to build a community where traders can learn share and grow together helping them to make more informed and strategic trading decisions in various financial markets we are in a four-part series knowing about confirmation indicators that traders use to enter and exit trades in our last video we talked about volume price action analysis where we use the volume and price as our confirmation indicators to enter and exit trades this week i'm going to talk about the rsi The RSI or the Relative Strength Index is a momentum oscillator that the traders use to identify general trends, potential reversals or oversold and overbought conditions. The RSI oscillates between 0 to 100 and it helps traders to identify the market sentiment and potential upcoming price movements. An RSI reading above 70 suggests that the asset is overbought, indicating a potential price reversal or a pullback. In this state, the likelihood of a pullback increases. On the flip side, if the RSI is below 30, we would consider that to be an oversold sentiment on the asset and the potential for price increase to the upside increases. The most naive way that I have seen people use the RSI is once it starts hitting the oversold level, they start buying the asset. Uh, this particular stock has to bounce, there has to be a price increase and whatnot once there's that uh, oversold level that is, that is hit. But unfortunately, these oversold and overbought conditions on the RSI can remain oversold or overbought in a strong trend market. And your, your account might not be as solvent as the market is, right? So using that technique is a very naive way, but new traders come to senses very quickly thinking uh, using this technique of, of uh, buying when it hits the oversold and selling when it hits the overbought. It, it need not happen that way. Like right here on this particular example, once it hit the oversold, yes, we had a bounce, right? But then you see when we hit the overbought, we are correcting through time. Buying put somewhere up here just because it hit the overbought is not the right strategy. Uh, uh, here, it kind of worked out. But if you go back to 2022 or something like a strong downtrend market, you will see that once we hit an over, oversold sentiment, it remained oversold for a prolonged period of time. And that can happen with RSI. And that's why it is not a very reliable indicator just by using uh, these naive techniques. So using these naive techniques, be very, very careful with RSI because one, the market conditions can remain overbought or oversold for a prolonged period of time then the RSI does not give you a good indication for that. Second, too many false positives. There are so many false signals that the RSI can give you in the market that you cannot use it as a reliable indicator. Three, RSI is a lagging indicator and volume and price are the only ones that precede the RSI. When using the RSI, I usually look for divergences. Bullish and bearish divergences in the RSI has always helped me as a trader to identify the market tops or market bottoms and help me to ride the wave up or down. There was a lot of fear in the market with a strong downtrend. I did identify that there was some kind of a bullish divergence that was forming on the RSI. What do I mean by a bullish divergence is the price making a lower low. If you see the price is making a lower low, but the RSI starts to make a higher low, right? That means there is a bullish divergence in the market. And then we wrote all the way back up riding this way. The same signal occurred to me again in 2012, where I was seeing a higher low on the RSI and a lower low on the price. And that was another indication for another rally that we have picked up. Again, the indication showed up again in 2016 where there was this fear of the market going down, but lower low on the price, you know, higher low on the oscillator. That's exactly where we bought again and we rode all the way back up. I think that was called the Trump rally or something, I guess. Again, in 2022, when there was so much fear in the market, hyperinflation, QT starting and the Fed rising interest rates, etc., etc. 
this was where we saw that indication again where we were like okay you know what there's a higher uh, there's a lower low on price but then there's a higher low on the oscillator and we rode the wave all the way back up so this is a very rare and very nice indicator that the rsi gives us and it is a extremely good confirmation indicator to snipe the market bottoms in a very strong downtrend while we talk about these bullish divergences, there is also something called a bearish divergence that the RSI kind of gives us, and I'll go over that in a lower time frame. So, a bullish divergence is basically the RSI making a lower high while the price is making a higher high. That essentially is what a bearish divergence is. But before we dive into a lower time frame and we talk about these divergences in much more detail with some more examples, I want to give you three important pro tips about identifying divergences. The first step is RSI works best when it enters the extreme overbought or oversold levels. Like for example here if you see we are at oversold level, we are at an oversold level, we are at an oversold level, we are at an oversold level, right? When we hit those oversold levels is when you can identify these divergences working really really well. Number two, these divergences work really well on higher time frames, especially on weeklies, dailies and things like that. I do not really like to play them on the 15 minute or the 5 minute because they gives you, give you a lot of false positives. Thirdly, these divergences give you a good sense of market reversal or bottoming or topping kind of signal when there is a very clear trend that has been formed, like a very clear downtrend. Like if you see here, we see a very nice clean downtrend and then we see the divergen bullish divergence which helps to identify the market bottom. Every single time, right? Like you see the downtrend here, downtrend here, downtrend here, and very nice clean downtrend is what gives you a nice sense of a uh, bottoming sign when you see these divergences and they really work out well. So these divergences that we have just seen on the weekly time frame, yes, they are very, very good confirmation indicators for market bottoming and trying to ride up. But they are very rare signals, right? Like you saw that in 2009, then came 2012, then 2016, then came 2022. Can you really use them in a lower time frame, like in a daily, and try to snipe the market bottoms uh, on a daily time frame to play some option leaps for about three to six months out? The answer to that is an absolute yes. I'll show you quickly uh, how I use these divergences on the daily time frame, trying to see where the market has bottomed. Since we are looking at 2023, 2024, um, let's go over certain examples there and see where we should be more careful, where we should be more uh, aggressive in our in our positioning and uh, how we can identify market top and be a little bit more risk off with our investments. Here, I have a daily chart where we identified the weakness in October as a potential high risk reward reversal trade idea where the market can go back to all time highs. Here is a divergence that we have seen. You see the market was making lower lows on the price, right? Like this is a, this is a low and this is a lower low. But then when you look at the RSI, there was a clear bullish divergence that we have identified, which helped us identify the market bottom and we rode all the way back up based off these indication that we have seen. There are certain points in the market where we started to see a little bit more turbulence and we were a little bit more careful in the market trying not to go aggressive, trying to be a little bit more nimble with our trades. We sized down, we reduced the number of our trades and I can show you certain areas where we did that. This was where we were seeing some bearish divergence in the market you see how the RSI has made a higher, uh, lower high while the price has made a higher high. And this was somewhere we saw a bearish divergence and this was where we were staying a little bit more nimble and open-minded towards a potential pullback. And that's essentially what happened, right? We did see a pullback and we did see a pullback in the RSI as well and then before the market hit right back, headed right back higher. There was also a good 5% correction that we have got in the market by playing puts and securing our long-term portfolios by hedging our positions where we saw a higher high on the price but a lower high on the oscillator. And that's when once the once the RSI broke under 50, we hedged our positions and were able to catch a 5% downside move on SPX towards 5,000. 
I hope using RSI as a confirmation indicator for identifying potential reversals in the market can help you build a very efficient strategy. To effectively master trading strategies, it is highly advisable to start off with low risk environments, betting small or doing some paper trading before trying to put in your own money. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Definitely comment some feedback below. Your feedback is absolutely invaluable to me. Thanks a lot.